Welcome back to the third installment of the AR-15 high rail gas block machining video series. I have to start out by profusely apologizing. I somehow lost the footage of the profiling operation. Um, it's simply just not on my camera and I know I recorded it. So the next, next best thing, I was just going to show you how I did that with my uh, cam program. So the first thing I did was sort of simulate a high-speed machining toolpath. I don't have that capability yet, but a high-speed machining toolpath is essentially a spiral. So I am using uh, some spiral toolpaths here just to remove the bulk of the material because uh, in the past when I tried to do this, um, the profiling operation without doing this step, I got a lot of chatter. This uh, greatly minimizes the chatter, and it doesn't take that long. Uh, so all I'm doing here is just simple spirals. Uh, let's see, uh, 200 thousandths depth of cut, 50 thousandths width of cut. Uh, I think the spindle speed is around 21, 25, and the feed rate is 38 inches a minute. So this uh, doesn't take that long just a couple of minutes per part so right now I'm just doing one part just to make sure I got all the uh, parameters nailed down that I like and then I'm gonna move on to uh, obviously putting many more parts on the fixture plate um, these these operations uh, were really hard on my roughing end mill and uh, I've gone through uh, several of them. I've been getting them from Meritool, and they're they're just fine. I'm just doing something wrong or something. But anyway, this morning I called uh, Carl at Lakeshore Carbide, and he was extremely helpful, in, uh, and he took a, a great interest in helping me nail down a process here with the right tooling. So uh, I definitely would highly, highly recommend Lakeshore Carbide. Carl is just a super nice guy and he'll help you if he can. Uh, so after I got the uh, the bulk of the material roughed out with those spiral tool paths, uh, now I'm going back and doing the full profile operation. This is with the same cutting parameters, uh, still using the roughing end mill. And this uh, goes pretty smooth. It definitely uh, is, is pretty loud in the cut, but it's not chatter loud. It's just it just sounds like a lot of uh, material being removed, and partially the problem I was having was uh, my end mill kept getting uh, chips on the flutes, and the more it chipped, the more the, just the louder it got. So after uh, the the profile is roughed out. Uh, and I'm still kind of working on, you know, the order of operations here. And there's all the tool paths from the machining from the top side. Uh, most of those we'll get to in this video. A lot of them just vanished off my camera, so you have to watch it in cam. But I will do the, I will redo those, no question about it. So you'll get to see those at some point maybe even in the next video we'll see uh, but I ran into a problem that uh, basically halted my machining for the day so I'll have to wait till next week but you'll see that in a few minutes then uh, I go back and do a finishing operation with a four flute finishing end mill and you can see I'm taking a five thousandths with the cut there and you can, you can kinda see it's just like a skim cut off the surface and I played around with different depths. I, I really wanted to do this with a full depth and uh, just do it in one pass, but that just does not lend itself to a good surface finish. And I even tried doubling the depth of cut here, and that definitely makes for a rougher surface finish. So I decided on just keeping a 50 thousandths depth of cut. That gives me a pretty nice surface finish, as you'll see in a minute. Um, not 
like super fantastic awesome but not terrible it's it's actually fairly decent so I kept that and I mean this thing is going to be sandblasted and parkerized at some point anyway so I just wanted to uh, you know try to get a good surface finish because to me that kind of equates to longer tool life <clears throat> and if I can <clears throat> figure out how to work my cam here I I did a, there's some operations right there where it's just cutting out a recess with an eighth inch, or a, sorry, a three eight, or what is it, three sixteenths inch end mill. And I go by with a 45 degree chamfer mill to cut some 45 degrees on there. And then I <clears throat> come in with a round over end mill here in a second to cut that main radius portion on the front. And those operations work fantastic, unbelievable surface finish. Now the part that I had made before, I could tell that that machine shop basically 3D profiled the entire uh, part from the side. And I played around with that in the cam and wow, that takes a long time. So I thought this, this way would be better, machining it from this side first and I'll be able to get the vast majority of the machining done from uh, one set up here. So this is where I am I have that roughing end mill. I'm going in, I'm just kind of kind of rough out the shape of that bayonet lug. And it's not cutting anything now because I went back and redid the programming to where in the future it actually would be removing material here. But it doesn't start to cut until sometime in there. And this end mill is chipped and it's dull, so it just sounds like hell trying to cut through that material. And I'm losing coolant pressure, so I had to go back and refill my reservoir. I also had to take apart my vise and clean it, because uh, whenever I machine steel, these chips get into the lead screw and it just jams it up. So that took a while. So here I am cutting out. I was kind of nervous about this operation here just because I'm removing a pretty good amount of material. And I got that long reach end mill. And, you know, truth be told, I should probably switch to a shorter one. And I may end up doing that, as you see right there. Yeah! Broke a half-inch carbide end mill. Now, I'm pretty certain the reason that it broke was because one of the flutes was severely chipped. And the other ones are pretty dull. So I think it just got hung up and it just required so much force to turn that thing. It just snapped right off. Uh, but I'm working with Carl at Lakeshore Carbide to come up with a better solution for this. Again, highly, highly recommended. So I happen to have that end mill that I used in the dice machine videos that is horribly dull. But it's much shorter, so I have a lot more rigidity to work with here. I basically just finished that operation with that shorter end mill, and that worked fine. Although, pretty loud, being, being as that, that end mill is so dull. So it made it through, but I definitely need to replace that end mill. So then I went back with a finishing operation, basically the same uh, size end mill except uh, not a rougher. And I'm using the same parameters that I used on the profile around the outside of the block. That gave me a pretty good surface finish, uh, 50,000 depth of cut. 5,000 with the cut and I I didn't realize it until I actually machined it but this is kind of redundant I don't need to finish the top of the bayonet log that's all going to be machined again from a different vantage point anyway I really just need to get the bottom part there that you can see so I'll change that in the code
So here are some recesses that need to be, be machined out and I'm using a 3 16 inch uh, four flute carbide end mill and uh, this worked really nice. It sounded good, it cut good, it left a good surface finish. The end mill is not chipped and damaged and boogered up so pretty happy with that one. I'm just going to leave that one the way it is. I actually did pull off a full depth finish pass with that. Here are some 45 degree chamfers that I was putting around in various areas. This ends up being, uh, in my mind, the fastest, easiest way to do this rather than trying to machine it from a different uh, setup. This just works so well and it leaves such a good surface finish and it just sounds so good that I really love uh, these operations and these tools. Here is the uh, same uh, 109,000 uh, roundover radius mill that I used on the dice. Uh, this thing is just a beautiful cutter. It cuts steel better than it cuts titanium for sure, but I think that could probably be said for any cutter. But it's gentle in the cut. It leaves a super fine finish. Much faster than trying to 3D mill that. I'm very satisfied with that cut. All in all, very nice surfaces, surface finishes. Um, I have some work to do on some issues here and there, recamming it. Got to get some new tools from Lakeshore Carbide, uh, but very pleased so far. I think that's going to be all the operations for this front side. Uh, there are some other things I could do from the front side, but I think they'll just be easier to machine from a uh, different setup, either on the same fixture in a different setup or on a, on a different fixture. and just to show off some of the surface finishes so you can get an idea of what it looks like it's really very nice especially considering like I said before this parts ultimately going to be sandblasted and parkerized so it's going to have a rough textured finish anyway but you know if you're going to machine it you might as well machine it to have a nice surface finish that's how I roll all right, guys, that's it for this week. Uh, I promise I'll do another video showing all of these operations uh, together, including the, the uh, main profiling pass. Uh, you can read more about this and other things at uh, www.warmachinellc.com. You can like us on Facebook. Uh, subscribe, share, like my videos, and please visit Lakeshore Carbide. I got a feeling they're going to be my next tool supplier. By the way, if somebody can recommend a free program that does screenshot video, that'd be great. Thanks again and see you next video.